Hi, my name is Manu Prakash. I'm a faculty at Stanford Bioengineering. With the context of the shortage of ventilators, we've been thinking about how do you really build a ventilator that has the capacity to support a COVID-19 patient. This has been a daunting challenge. So by a chance accident, uh, we met a team of engineers and clinicians at University of Utah. I am Kai Cook, and I'm Director of Anesthesiology Bioengineering Research at the University of Utah. And in our lab, we have decades of working on respiratory devices and monitors on anesthesia technology. And we decided to combine our sources uh, together uh, to really build uh, a team. Uh, we call this the Utah Stanford Ventilator. When we met Manu Prakash and his team and combining our expertise with their long experience on frugal innovation, that was the ideal mix to not only create a ventilator that we know works and we know how to test, but also one that we can vet clinically immediately. One of the key design principles and philosophies that we've been focused on in building this ventilator is to not rely on the classical supply chain. We don't just have shortage of ventilators, we have the shortage of regularly used medical supply that's used in building ventilators. And as a group at large who thinks about frugal science, we started looking at what other sets of industries that might have parts that we could build ventilators out of. And inspiration struck when we realized that we could borrow parts from automated coffee machines, the actuators that go into moving your car seat, all the way to actually the faucet valves that go inside uh, whenever every single day you turn the water in your basin on and off. Using these sets of parts, we've been able to build ventilators that have the capacity to deliver very classical modes of uh, mechanical ventilation that clinicians often use, including volume control, uh, a limited version of a pressure control, and at that same time, assisted breathing. But it's incredibly important to give clinicians the knobs to be able to take care of the patients in the best possible manner. The ventilators have been breathing uh, for the last couple of days now, um, and very soon we're moving our work into reliability testing to really be able to test these ventilators for the context of long-term use. We've engaged both clinical partners, manufacturing partners, and uh, experts in reliability testing. One of the goals of our endeavor is not just to build ventilators right here for the US market, but to really build ventilators and engage broader communities around the world. Our designs are completely open source and anybody can find the sets of supplies and build these class of ventilators. An important philosophical approach that we took in designing our ventilators is modularity. So we provide certain sets of examples, including uh, the solenoid valves, or for example, proportional pinch valves that allow us to be able to swap parts back and forth such that if a single supply chain in a given country is not accessible, somebody could still build a ventilator by swapping the parts. We are really hopeful as a team that you would engage with us and take on this massive challenge that we face in the kinds of healthcare shortages that we are seeing in the world right now. A ventilator that has all the hallmarks for success in a world with uncertain supply chains, with rapidly emerging needs, and not only for our own backyards, but also for more austere environments. My hope is that we bootstrap the access to health and access to health technologies to people around the world in an open manner. If you would like to engage in testing these ventilators, giving us feedback, or any process of manufacturing these at scale, we would be delighted to hear from you at ventforus.org.